Lesson 10.4, we're going to use time intervals. We're going to find start and end times. We can find an ending time if we know the starting time and the elapsed time. We can find a starting time if we know the elapsed time and the ending time. We can use a number line or analog clock to help us. To find an ending time, we begin at the starting time and count on, forward, the amount of elapsed time. To find a starting time, we begin at the ending time and count back, backwards, the amount of elapsed time. When we skip count on a number line, we jump forward or backward in amounts that are easy or make sense. We can skip count by 5 minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes as quarter hours, 30 minutes as half hours. Then we continue counting by ones until we get to the correct time, if we need to count by ones. Tim begins working on his science homework at 4.30 p.m. After 44 minutes, he finishes. At what time does Tim finish his science homework? We can use a number line to find the ending time. It gave us the beginning time of 4.30 p.m. and it told us the elapsed time of 44 minutes until he finished. On our number line, we start at 4.30, the beginning time. And because this is a multiple of 10, this 30, we can count by tens. On our number line, we would write 430, 440, 450, and then it would go to 5 o'clock, wouldn't it? Then after 5 o'clock, it would go to 510. Then we can count on little minutes, one at a time. So we would skip count 10, 20, 30, 40 minutes, then 41, 42, 43, 44, until we land at 514 p.m. We count forward, drawing and labeling the jumps. Tim finishes at 514 p.m. We can break apart 44 minutes into less jumps by jumping 30 minutes, then 10 minutes, then 4 minutes. We can do 30 plus 10 plus 4 to equal 44. Going from 4.30 to 5 p.m., that's a half an hour. That's 30 minutes, half of the clock face. We just jump to 5 o'clock p.m., and now we can jump 10 minutes to 5.10 p.m. We're at a total of 40 now, and we just need 4 more minutes That'll bring us to 5.14 p.m. So Tim finished his science homework at 5.14 p.m. And because we're at the starting time and our elapsed time is 44 minutes, we're going to go in this direction and we're just going to count on forward. We can also solve this problem by using an analog clock. We start at 4.30. The hour hand is in between the 4 and the 5, and the minute hand is on the 6 for 4.30. And where the minute hand is on the 6, that's going to be our zero mark for when we start skip counting. We skip count by 5s, we get to 40, and then we count on by 1s until we get to 44. And the minute hand passed the 12, so the hour is not in the 4s anymore, it'll become 5. And the minute hand will show 14 minutes past 5 o'clock. It will be 5.14 p.m. So what we did was we can just skip count by fives going back. We can also just go straight to the 12 and say that's 30 minutes because we know that's a half hour, isn't it? We can find a starting time by using a number line we would need to know the ending time and the elapsed time. Raj went swimming for 25 minutes. He finished swimming at 1.15 p.m. At what time did he start swimming? So for this problem, we know when he finished, we know how long it took him, so we need to count back to find the starting time. He finished at 1.15 p.m. and it took him 25 minutes. We find the time, or draw it, on the number line when Raj finished swimming at 1.15 p.m. So now we're going to start on the right-hand side of the number line. We count back to subtract the elapsed time, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. 
our increments of time are going back by fives. If we want to have five minutes before 1.15 p.m., it would be 1.10 p.m. We took away five. We take another five away and we're at 1.05 p.m. We take another five away and we're at 1 o'clock p.m. And when we take away five minutes from this, the hour changes to the 12 and our minutes are 55 because there's 60 minutes in an hour, aren't there? Then we go back another five minutes and we're at 12.50. So we jump back 25 minutes towards the left by fives. So we start here and go back towards the left. So Raj started swimming at 12.50 p.m. We can use an analog clock to find his starting time. We draw the ending time on our clock. We have 1.15. We count back 25 minutes by jumps of 5. And we see where the minute hand was pointing when he started. So it was pointing to the 10. So by counting back by 5s, our minute hand is moving back 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. That means the minute hand, when he started, was pointing to the 10. And our hour hand is going to go back also. Because this minute hand went back over the 12, our hour is going to shift to be between the 12 and 1. So that's where the hour hand would have been when he started. Because the minute hand went backwards past the 12, the hour, it's before 1 o'clock. It's now 12, so it's 12.50. Starting at the 12, we can see this is 10 minutes to the hour, but we can start at the 12 and say 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. When the minute hand is pointing to the 10, we know the minutes are at 50, right? So it's 12.50. It's telling us to find the ending time, and it's giving us the start time of 2.40 p.m., and that the elapsed time is 33 minutes. Because we have the starting time, we're going to start on this side and go forward to the right to find the ending time. We can start at 2.40 and jump 20 minutes to 3 o'clock. Then we can jump another 10 minutes to 3.10 and a few more minutes, three more minutes, until we get to 33 minutes, and that would be at 3.13 p.m. We did 20, and then 10, and then 3, and that added together is equal to 33 minutes. That was our jumps. We went from 20 minutes before the hour to the hour. See? When we're at 2.40, we need 20 minutes to get to 3 o'clock. So we just went right to 3 o'clock and then went on from there. The ending time is 3.13 p.m. What if the elapsed time was 38 minutes? It gives us the start time, and we can find the ending time by using an analog clock. We start at 2.40, and we skip count by fives. The minute hand's on the eight, so that's going to be our zero. We're going to go 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. Then we count on a minute at a time, 36, 37, 38. We count forward 38 minutes, and the minute hand goes past the 12. So the hour goes up by one, so it's not in the twos anymore, it's in the threes. So the ending time would be 3, 18 p.m. And remember, when we need to find an ending time, we begin at the starting time and count on the amount of the elapsed time. We count forward. When we need to find a starting time, we begin at the ending time that they gave us and count back the amount of the elapsed time. We go towards the left. And remember to use AM or PM when writing the times. Emma began doing her homework at 3.50 p.m. and finished at 4.44 p.m. Tala finished her homework at 5.12 p.m. They both completed their homework in the same amount of time. What time did Tala begin doing her homework? We know that they both did it in the same amount of time, the same length of time, the same elapsed time, but they want to know what Tala's start time was, her, when she began doing her homework. 
So there's two parts to this problem. The first thing is we find the elapsed time by using Emma's information. We know she started at 3.50 p.m. and ended at 4.44 p.m. We can figure out the elapsed time that it took because for both of them because they both had the same amount of time for their homework. After that, we find Tala's start time by using the elapsed time that we figured out. So for Emma's elapsed time, we know she started at 3.50, so our number line can start at 3.50, and our increments can go to 4 o'clock, 4.10, 4.20, 4.30, 4.40, and then we can count on by ones. And we go to 4.44 p.m., so we go 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54 minutes. So it took them both 54 minutes to complete their homework. 54 minutes elapsed. Now that we know that, and we know Tala's end time, we can figure out her start time. Now we can use Tala's ending time of 512 and the elapsed time of 54 minutes to find Tala's starting time. We jump back. We start on the right hand side, we jump back towards the left for 54 minutes because that was the elapsed time. And we can do this several different ways. We can start by jumping back 10 from 5.12 p.m. to 5.02 and continue counting back 10s until we get back to 54 minutes. We can also start by jumping back 12. It's at 5.12. We can jump back 12 minutes and go directly to 5 o'clock. And then jump back 10 minutes. So if we do it the first way, we can go from 5.12 to 5.02. That's 10 minutes. Then to 4.52. Now we jump back 20 minutes. To 4.42. Now we've jumped back 30 minutes. To 4.32. Now we've jumped back 40 minutes. And to 4.22. Now we've jumped back 50 minutes, and we go 21, 20, 19, 18, so we're at 4.18 p.m. Because we jumped back 10, we took 10 away from the 12. See, that's how we got to 5.02. So our minutes are always going to end with a 2 because we're going back by 10s. If we immediately take away 12 minutes and go back to 5 o'clock, now our increments are easier. They go to 4.50, then 4.40, then 4.30, then 4.20, but... Our, our jumping back is going to have a 2 in the 1's place. So now we jump back 12 minutes. 10 more is 22 minutes. 10 more is 32 minutes. 10 more is 42 minutes. 10 more is 52 minutes. But we need to get to 54. So we go 53, 54, and add on a couple more minutes, and we're at 4.18 p.m. We can count back either way as long as it totals 54 minutes. We can also figure out Tala's start time. If we use an analog clock, we can count back 54 minutes. The minute hand is here, pointing at the 12, because she finished at 5.12, and we're going to go backwards. Now, if we went straight across the clock to here, that would be 30 minutes. We know half of a clock face is half an hour. It's 30 minutes. So we can just go straight back to this point and say, okay, we counted back 30 and if we go to the 6, we've got 5, 10, 11, 12 minutes here. We're at 30. Now we're at 42. We can go back another 10 minutes. We'll be at 52 minutes. Then we can go back a 1 and a 1 to 53 and 54. And the minute hand goes back past the 12. It was here and it went back past the 12. So it's not in the 5 hours anymore. It's going to be in the 4s. It went back. See? And the minute hand will point to the 18 spot. We know the 3 means 15 minutes, 5, 10, 15, 16, 17, 18. So this little mark is 18 minutes past. So Tala began her homework at 4.18 p.m. See? Now, for some of you who are a little more advanced, you might be able to look at it this way. We know the elapsed time was 54 minutes. We also know that there's 60 minutes in an hour. If they did their homework for 60 minutes, the minute hand would have gone back one complete time back to the same spot, and the hour would have been in the fours instead of the fives. Instead of 512, you know, 
it would have been 412 when she started, but we're six minutes short of a full 60 minute hour. So actually we can go back that hour, but then do it six minutes less. And if you look, we got one, two, three, four, five, six minutes less than filling the entire clock with this blue color. See, it's six minutes short of being an entire hour, this little white part here. So if you can look at it that way, if they did their homework for 59 minutes, that's only one minute short of an hour. If they did their homework for 59 minutes, we could say, well, one hour, 60 minutes would be right back here at 412, but it's one minute short, so there'd be one little white minute line right here to be at 59. So that means they started here and it went around the 59 minutes, see? So when it's really close to 60 minutes, you can use an hour and then just count back the minutes that are missing, okay? The minutes that it's less than the hour. 10.5, we're gonna do word problems with elapsed time. It's gonna be our last lesson for this playlist that we learn about time. Remember, when you're using a number line and you have the start time, you're gonna go forward towards the right as you count on your elapsed time. And when you need to find the starting time, we start on the right-hand side of the number line and count back the elapsed time. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Take good care of yourself, and I'll see you next time. And don't forget to hit the like button. It helps me keep my videos on the top of the YouTube list. Bye.